Welcome to movie number two, uh, working with Mad Mapper and Quartz Composer. As I mentioned in movie number one, we're going to build a file first in Quartz and then just import into Mad Mapper and um, just put the file together. Right, the, just to make things easier, I've got a whole range of files here that were used in the making of the first example. So I just want to make it nice and simple. So I've just created a few objects from scratch and we're just going to build that. So I'm just going to open this folder up. Now, just to show you what I've got here, I've got my background image that was actually used in Mad Mapper to actually create the background. So I just open that up and uh, just bring that down. That's what uh, the main section uh, of the, the mapped area was um, projecting onto. So just to show you um, what that is, and we bring that, of course, into a background within Mad Mapper, so we can act, actually map the services when we're not on location. It's really good to shoot from where the projector is going to be. It's going to save you heaps of time doing that way, particularly when you're doing a real complex thing. This was pretty simple. So I'm just going to close that. Uh, we're not going to use that file, so I'm just going to move that out of the way. So great, that's only just um, a few files here. Uh, I've got a sound file, which I'm actually not going to use either. So we're just back down to three. Now. To explain what I've got here is just a MP4, so it's a video file, it's on Mac, so of course MP4 and Mad Map is for Mac as well, so that's exactly what we want. MP4, so it keeps the size down a little bit, and I've just got a JPEG. I'm just going to make this nice and simple. Now the other file here that I mentioned as well was working with a 3D file. Doesn't matter what 3D program you use, you just need to have your model, light it up, texture it, whatever you're going to do, etc. Um, and just export it as a Collada file, a dot .dae extension. So you just need to look that for that extension and just export it as that. So it's on a uh, just a alpha channel background or clear background, no background at all actually, it's just the 3D object, and we're going to bring that in. So you can create that in any 3D, 3D program you want. So um, let's get started and we can understand this process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just open up Quartz Composer, uh, just out of view from your screen, but um, when I click on it, it just sort of comes up like this. Okay, and there's all these other things you can use here. Now, I just suggest um, stay away from those because you've got far more scope and it's a lot easier actually just working with a basic composition and adding your stuff to it because you can be unique and do what you want that way as well. So I'm just going to make sure that's highlighted, which it is by default and I'll just go choose. When you choose um, your file, it'll come in with a clear. Okay, and I'm just gonna bring this into view here so we can see it. I might just um, make sure that's just a little bit closer over here. Um, now, a clear will make this black. Strange, I know, but um, clear will enable you to do your different color effects and it doesn't have to be black, it can be a color. But just before I do that, I'm just gonna start with this viewing mode. So if you don't see that, if I move it over there, you'll see the viewer. You can just turn off and bring it forward or back, etc. So if I close it, and I'll just bring that back again and click on that, that comes back up. And it's quite good to see what's happening on the fly, so I'm just gonna leave that there for the time being. Now, if I don't have a clear here, I'm just going to delete that, and basically, it's gone clear, strangely enough. So we need a clear mode to control whatever color we're going to have for the background. This is where you use your patch library. So I'll bring this over a little bit further, so make sure we've got enough space. So if I click on the patch library, you can see that this library comes in here. Now, to get all the effects, if I've got anything written here, you're gonna be limited to whatever it says in here, so clear that as well. Um, and then you can just start typing what we're looking for. So we want to clear, I've just started typing here. And um, so we've got clear. As you can see, here's a gradient as well. So if you wanna start playing with gradients later, you've got an idea where that is at the same time. Particle systems, a lot of fun with that, but we're not going to get into that sort of stuff at this stage. I just want to show you the standard process so you can just start playing with it and then start creating, and that's really what this is about. Clear. If I click on that like so, watch what happens here. All I do is with the patch, just drag it in. 
And as you see, we're basically back to where we started with at this stage. We've got our um, transparent area. Just a bit clearer to see there. Right, let's start um, building some files into this. Now, what I want to do is, for a start, I want to create a cube. And obviously, that's probably giving things away quite nicely. So I'm going to create a cube, a 3D cube. So I'm just going to clear that by just typing or highlighting it and clearing it. And I'll just start going cube. And here it's found a cube for me. Actually, I want the second one here. And um, three-dimensional. Okay, just read the description. So it tells you a lot as you're putting things together. So I'm just going to drag that in like so. And there's my 3D cube. So I'll just escape that. Didn't want that to go that big, actually. But... There's the cube there. It's not really doing much. In fact, it doesn't even look like a cube. It's just flat on. This is where we start giving it some parameters and um, form, if you will. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just going to scroll this down just a little bit. By the way, you can hold your shift key too, and then you can just move things around with your, um, sorry, not shift key, but space bar, and that turns into a hand. A lot like working with um, some of the design programs. So it comes in handy. Okay, so you can see what we've got. We've got our clear, and we've got a cube that's been dragged in. Let's go to the, um, basically, inspector. But before I do the inspector, um, I'm just going to highlight the cube. I want to give it a bit of form here. Okay, so I'll click on the inspector, and I'm just going to bring that in. Okay, now... Um, what we've got here, it, this just tells us a little bit about the width, the height, the depth, even though we can't see things at this stage. The other thing what we've got here is we've got one, two, three, four, five um, surfaces that are listed here where we can um, actually play with the color, so the top, um, the bottom, and we can actually click on here and just go and give it different colors. So something to remember if you want to color things up in a different way. In fact, I did use this for the final demonstration, and I've got my sort of um, CMYK sort of primary type colors and black sort of stuck in here as well for what I was doing. And they, they're still there, but I'm not going to do it for this example. But it's up to you to just play with that. I'm just going to close that. What I want to do is for a, for a start, just size it down a little bit. It's just a little bit big there. So I'm just going to go, um, just go to 0.3. You see it's sizing down there, 0.3, sizing down there, and um, 0.3. Let's click here. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so I've just got my cube, which is just there. What I should be able to do, if I just move that out of the way, with um, some of the rotation areas, I should be able to move that around a little bit. Um, or actually, probably not the, the right, quite the right angle there. I might just make that say uh, 30. Let's see what that says. Just click here. So you can see it's actually rotating around. But uh, of course, when we go around 360, when we're actually working with rotation, quite different to actually working with um, position, you've got 360 degrees to do a full circle. So um, whereas if I just go to position, I'll just go X here, I'll go 3, and it pops right off the page. So just not to get confused with um, 3 representing a large distance and then a tiny distance when you get back to degrees. So I'll just go 0 0.3 and see what that does. See it's moved a little bit and I'll go back to 0. So if things go way off the page, just go and look at your x, y, z position and um, then you should be able to move things back in space. I'll go back to 0 here just for the time being. And I'm going to just go to 0 rotation as well. I really want quartz to do the work for me, okay? Sort of using a bit of interpolation, okay? So there's my cube. If I'm not happy with that, I can change the size. In fact, I might just put it up a little bit bigger. So easy to do, okay? So that's all you need to do at each stage. Right. As I mentioned before, um, interpolation. So um, I'm going to go, and I'm going to go to enter. Palation. I don't have to type it all, just look for it. That's what I want. And I'm just going to bring this into the scene here. Okay. And I'll just move my 
library patch thing out of the way for a sec and to show you what's happening here. Okay, so we have interpolation and we have the cube. Okay, just going to move that up to the top. Start point zero, duration one, value one. Okay, well, as I mentioned, um, I'm going to rotate it around and it's degrees, 360. So that's a good place to start, zero to 360. I want to do continuous turns. Um, and the duration, well, I want to make that, say, not too fast, maybe just um, 10 seconds there. I might uh, just play with the tension a little bit. I've got loop, which is really good. So um, that's what we'll just stay with just for the time being. And um, so let's have a look and see what's happening. Well, nothing yet. Well, so we need to tell something to happen by using a patch. And patch is just that, we patch things in, a little bit like plugging in leads. So let's see, well, I've got my result and I've got my cube here. What I wanna do um, remember, we set the value, so that's great. What I want to do is I want to click on the result, and I want to go down here, and I'm actually looking at rotation, so I'm going to click on um, X, and see how it highlights? If I go to something it doesn't like, it doesn't highlight, I'm going to go to X rotation, and we'll see what that does. And now you can see what's happening on the side. We're getting things rotating around. Well, I want to get a little bit more zest to it, so I'm going to take the same result here, and I'm going to go to Y rotation. And now we're getting it going around the X and Y rotation at the same time. So that's pretty good. Um, in fact, I might play with a few other settings, and one that I quite like here. So I'm going to click that down here, and I'm going to go to uh, Cubic In Out, just to see what that does. And it um, starts off slow and starts speeding up. And In fact, that's what I use for the example I've got when I did the projection. Just so it can sit at one keyframe a little bit longer, particularly if you're going to have a whole lot of images that are basically still images that can move around, but when it gets back to the static image or, or the main front face, whatever face it happens to be, I had a movie running, so you could actually have a little bit more going on and let that movie really take over in that um, few seconds that it had available. So that's sorted, um, that's great. Now let's see what else we can do here. Well, as I mentioned, I'm just going to go back to um, just my cube for a minute here. We can go through and change the color of the faces, as I mentioned before. But as I said, I'm not going to worry about doing that. What I want to do is actually give it some um, light and some form and let a light source do that. So if I just close that for the time being. By the way, you see how that's animating around there. Um, I'm just going to move these two files out of the way here. I'm going to go back to my, if, by the way, if this ever gets closed, you just go back here. It's going to go back to my library of patches. And as I said, light. So I'm going to highlight down here and I'm just going to go to light. Okay, as you see, there's a whole lot of lights here. But the one that I want is, I'm just going to go to lighten. Um, some things when you're playing around work really well, some things don't seem to work at all, um, but it's so, it's a matter of plugging into the right things and it's just practice and actually play to get it right. You can also read the description. Anyway, I'm going to take my light source and I'm going to put it here. And I'll just plonk it over like so. Now if I just move this out of the way here, I've got my lighting in here and um, there's nothing to drag I can click on that, but it just doesn't work. It does give me a description, by the way, when I highlight things. And you can read this, which will give you some help. But essentially, it hasn't changed the form here. Now, here's a little trick, okay? Now, what we've got here is a shape and another shape or a patch. You notice that these are curved, all of these, and this is not curved, it's sharp corner edges. What that means is you can paste things into that. I can do a whole range of different things here, including put all my images on there, but I'm just going to make this nice and simple. Um, just for the start, instead of having to paste a whole range of things, 
I'm just going to click here. You can either drag a marquee or just shift select. And um, I'm going to cut it. By the way, you see this edit parent? It's grayed out at the moment. You'll see what happens shortly. I'm going to go to edit, cut. Go down here and just double click on it. See how this is highlighted? We, by double clicking, have gone inside of it. Watch what happens here when I just go and um, paste in. So if I move that over here, we have light, we have form. And if I click back out of the, to the, that to the parent, we're back to the outside. So we have things going on inside here. Now I can click on the light and I can go to my parameters, which brings the panel out like so. Or just go to the inspector to get the tool. I think I'll do it this way. And I can play with a few of my settings. Um, like, if I make this say 1, see how it goes darker? So what you have to do is just play around with that to see what's going on there. I might make this uh, 0 and see what that looks like. See, it's a little bit brighter. I might even play a little bit with the ambient light if I wanted to. If I just bring this up, it'll make it a little bit lighter. I can even click onto the colors and I'll warm the colors up as well, especially any graphics that appear on there. So it might not have been that obvious there, but it will certainly change with the graphics. Anyway, so I've just warmed it up a little bit. Um, close that, back onto the light. So you can change these things and click on here even for colors, etc. See, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. You can play around with this, bring up your values and your light. I'm just going to keep it quite simple and let you experiment with that. Um, and even the sliding for the um, shininess or specularity or whatever. Make sure if things don't work, by the way, and you're trying to find it, sometimes it comes up with a black box. Make sure you do enable it. So if that doesn't happen, and that happens on a number of tools here that click the enable and you'll see everything come back if it disappears. One other thing is I'm going to save this now. I'm just going to go save and I'm just going to go test, I think I'll just go test uh, quartz and um, make sure I save it into the right folder. So I'll move that out of the way, which is my Mad quartz here, test quartz here, and I'll just go save. Now it's really good to do this because as you start building up, it can crash on you, then it's gone, especially as it gets uh, more complicated. Actually, it's pretty stable, but um, just to be careful. And also, if you do something crazy, if you've um, saved it, you've also got to, uh, you can go revert to saved. Now, in some versions, in fact, I have one on my computer at work, which I didn't install myself. Um, I can't actually revert to save, but what you can do is save as a version, and you can get uh, save as one, two, three, four, and anything goes crazy, you can always revert back to the other ones. But anyway, um, this version has um, revert to saved. I do have a later computer at work, I'm not sure if that's the reason, but just be wary of that. Right, so we've got this put together at this stage, and all I'm going to do now is um, start putting a little bit of form onto the image. Okay, so when I speak of form, I'm going to put images in here. Okay, and um, I'm going to put 3D into it as well. And then I'm going to work with other sh um, shapes or other proportions just to get things really coming to life. So um, that's going to be happening in the next movie, which is actually going to be movie number three, just so these movies don't go on too long. Okay, so Mad Mapper uh, Quartz and movie number three. Stay tuned.